Hello and welcome to another episode of the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and our podcast guest today is Sean Jackson, who has a degree in chemistry, is a bamboo entrepreneur who created True Fit Forma, stylish bamboo clothing from Sacramento, California in the U.S. We will focus on three main topics today. Uh, the first one is advantages of using bamboo fiber versus cotton. The second one is um, about the sourcing of the material and the bamboo species. And the third one is the process of making the bamboo fiber for closing. So welcome again, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, JJ, for having me. You know, I enjoy your podcast. They're very informative. And, and you know, I just want to just commend you and just tell you to just keep doing the good work. So thank you for having me here. Thank you for the nice words there. Let's hope uh, we get uh, the word out with uh, your startup, which is highly interesting. So, um, yeah. So, um, Sean, let's talk about the, the, the very first topic, shall we? Um, yes. So, what, um, what are the, the advantages of using bamboo versus cotton or, or even a polyester? So, one of the advantages uh, with uh, using bamboo as opposed to cotton is sustainability. That's probably one of the big things there. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about two things, okay, when it okay. comes to sustainability. The first yeah. thing is the, the source itself, bamboo. Bamboo is fairly easy to grow. It's, um, it's got characteristics of, of grass. You know, it doesn't take long for it to grow. Uh, you can grow an entire forest in less than 10 years. Plus, you know, the bamboo itself is antibacterial uh, resistant. So it does great job. You don't have to worry about all these different pests attacking it. Uh, sure. Compare that to cotton. Growing up in the United States, you know, we learned in history that at the end of the 19th century, our cotton uh, industry was almost wiped out because of the boll weevil and a lot of the uh, cotton was grown in the south or the southern part of the United States. A lot of those southern, the entire southern economy was pretty much devastated because the boll weevil came up from the south and it attacked the cotton shoots. Yep. And the price of cotton started going up. And a lot of these different farmers didn't know what to do. Uh, as a result, they started uh, growing peanuts to try to, you know, recycle the land, get it cultivating again so they can start growing cotton again. An alternative, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, you fast forward another 40 years, 30 years, and now you're in the 20th century, and we've got these chemical pesticides that they have developed to basically attack the boll weevil. And it does a great job of, of protecting the plant against the boll weevil, but it's just stripping the land of all its nutrients. And the runoff started affecting a lot of people who live out there in the south and and it's just sad how it just seeps into the water supply again these are things that we did not know a hundred years ago when we were trying to just fight the boll weevil you know we were basically not only um making the cotton um very toxic but we were also ingesting it and drinking the water and that was a problem whereas with bamboo you don't have to deal with all that stuff you don't have to go out there and just destroy the land in fact Growing bamboo helps the soul because of the fact that, you know, it's, it's uh, properties, you know, it does a great job of just adding more nutrients. There's a whole cycle underground that's going on. You have good Absolutely. bacteria. You have, you know, different things such as scrubs and, and uh, we call them scrubs, those little roly polies. <laughs> <laughs> they are eating and they're also, you know, nurturing. And then you have the different types of, you know, uh, smaller animals that will eat those and then they die and the insects and it's an entire life cycle and it's just basically nourishing the earth but the bamboo grows really really fast so that's the first part of sustainability the second thing is water usage that's oh my gosh so, so you're talking about the water footprint right comparing yes. cotton let's say t-shirt compared to a, a um, bamboo t-shirt so this is interesting. The how much do you know the numbers for a, a bamboo or now a cotton T-shirt? How much? How many thousand liter of water are needed to get like one? Well, 
I so I've, I've we've all seen how it's like forty million gallons of water, and I don't having a science background. I don't like to quote things, you know, unless I can actually find the reference, see where it was quoted, and and, and see where that was published. Okay, but I will say this: okay. using cotton. And using other type of fabrics that they use uses 10 times as much water to actually just wash it. You know, for instance, the Levi Strauss company, they have a campaign that's going on right now that says, you know, you don't need to wash your jeans every time you wear them. In fact, your denim, denim, which is made out of cotton, mm -hmm. is one of the <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of the heavy consumers of water. So, so Levi Strauss, they tried to get in a hit of this and they basically will say, you don't have to wash your jeans every time you, you wear them. In fact, just get a damp rag and just wipe it, you know, and, and then just shape it. In fact, one of the presidents, uh, one of the vice presidents and uh, some of the other people who work for Levi Strauss, they say, oh, I've only washed my jeans a handful of times. I've owned them for years. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's one way of dealing with it. Um, yeah. So it, they, they're recognizing that using uh, you use a lot of water to clean cotton. Whereas mm -hmm. with bamboo, bamboo doesn't require as much water. Uh, normally, bamboo, is, is, its properties are, are very, um, how can I say this, water repellent, so to speak. Yes. That's in the bamboo itself. But the most important thing is that it's antibacterial and antimicrobial. So yes. a lot of the bacteria that you're going to get on cotton that just comes from our glands, especially in the summertime, that's going to actually, you know, be, it's going to have a harder time sticking to something that's made of bamboo, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and it's easier to clean that off. So you use less water, you know, so it's, Better Makes for the sense. environment. Makes sense. And it's, it's a strong point today. I mean, where uh, the water topic is really getting, like, every year, like, really uh, much worse <laughs> everywhere, right? It really is. And, you know, you see uh, the fashion industry, you see them now starting to address this, and they're trying to do different things to use less water. But... Not washing the clothes. <laughs> Not washing the clothes is my favorite one. It's like, don't wash your jeans. And it's like, well, don't wash my jeans. They're trying. They're trying. <laughs> they're trying. They're recognizing it. Now, of course, they have not come out with a different type of uh, denim. And maybe they will. But, you know, that's just Levi and Strauss. And, and they're, they're not the only people that are making denim jeans and cotton things. You've got all kinds of different brands that are making these type of jeans. And I love jeans. You know, I love wearing a good pair everyone. of jeans. In fact, everyone loves jeans. I mean, it's, they're great. But when you think about how much water it uses, you just cannot escape. You cannot escape the responsibility that you have to have, you know, if you, if you're wearing that all the time, you know, you have to consider that, you know, you are leaving a, an impact on this world by just wearing a lot of that stuff over and over and washing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And part of the issue, if, if, if you have to change uh, or get new jeans all the time and, and, uh, and that, right. So it's also about, uh, like consuming, but, but knowing what you're consuming and, and the impact, which in this case is water, for example. And, yes. Uh, let's see if in a few uh, years we have a podcast again and you'll present uh, bamboo jeans. Who knows? <laughs> you know, stranger things can happen, but I can see that happening, though. I mean, we'd have to change our process a little bit. But, of course. You know, it could definitely get there for sure. Just one question. Um, uh, we know bamboo is super flexible, like compared to uh, uh, trees because it's a giant grass, right? But how is it once it's broken down in, in cellulose? Because that's the main ingredient you use for, for the clothing, right? Is yes. it like more? flexible than a uh, cotton or is it at the end like clothing is, is closing or is there like a, from the flexibility of the of the of the um textile is there a difference there is um one thing with bamboo as opposed to cotton uh you can it's you got your tech your uh what we call tensile strength mm -hmm. it's you know really, really strong at the, uh, the, um, 
how can I say the uh, the strand level, or yeah. you take a piece of, of yarn and mm-hmm. you take a piece of bamboo yarn, you pull it. They actually measured the strength by just you know attaching it to um, basically one end will have um, a weight, another end will have a weight, and then they'll just pull and they'll see how much oh, uh, pressure it takes or how much pound force foot per pound to actually pull it apart. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have a stronger tensile strength, which is a benefit. One good benefit about it is that you don't have to do a lot of ironing or adding a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. Whereas with cotton, you have to have a lot of heat to it and iron it. And, you know, sometimes more you're never going to get those wrinkles out. More energy. More, ne- more energy user. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now with the energy prices, uh, that's probably why things are getting more expensive then too. <laughs> that's true. You know, but I like the, the tensile strength of bamboo because, you know, it, it maintains its shape very well. You can wear the clothing pretty much all day and you don't have to look like you basically slept in the clothing. They they maintain their shape, which is great, you know? And, and I, as I understood, I think this is kind of uh, uh, the USP of, of your startup, kind, right? Like yes. to create or to sell uh, bamboo clothing or, or T-shirts now in the first step, right? We help you to always look good and well-dressed. Exactly. Um, and, and, and just to tell you a little bit about it, the name of the mm-hmm. uh, brand is true fit forma and yep. you know we have our uh, kickstarter campaign um basically we can uh, put a link up that and, and show will. that but yep. the whole point it came about with um you know I, I just love my clothes to look good on me and i like to have a good fit and i couldn't find anything that would fit me well and i wasn't the only person that was dealing with that either um most people i know you know they either have shirts that are a little too tight or a little too big or a little too loose. So I set about trying to find material that would look the best on me. That's an example right there, that white shirt. Yeah. You see? Yeah, That's exactly. a typical what I call a t-shirt fail. It's just, it's got too much going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's like how it should not be, right? And uh... that's, that's my niece. Now ah. she's a a t-shirt to where it's just too tight it's and she's yeah. not happy as you can see right there yeah not so happy right now. yeah and so no, there's my wife right there ah, <laughs> and she has the collar which is yeah really difficult to wear well it's yeah. just too tight and you know she doesn't even wear t-shirts because of that <laughs> issue so you know we i basically cut some sizes and started you know working around the way that we're built differently nowadays. It seems like with clothing, uh, it's one size fits all. They give you like a handful of sizes and they're like, okay, deal with it. And I don't think we have to deal with it anymore. We shouldn't have to still deal like that. Um, this gentleman right here, he's wearing one of our shirts. He's a size double XL. Wow. And it doesn't look like that. Yeah. No, no <laughs> it, it does a great job of, of, Concealing the areas that you don't want to be exposed, but it's also showing off the shoulders very well and the other muscles. So, you know, those are just some of the things that we wanted to highlight on. We wanted to accent the the areas that we think that we want to show, like our shoulders or our chest. You know, most people don't want to walk around with their their gut sticking out, so to speak. So here's me with the shirt on right there. So Exactly. I was looking for that. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) So, awesome. yeah, the whole goal was to create a, a, a uh, an apparel to where it's a true fit mm-hmm. based upon, you know, the way we're built nowadays. And, you know, here it is 2024. We may not have flying cars like they promised us, but we yeah. should be able to have clothing that looks good, feels good, and also is good for the environment. So that's kind of how we came up with the name and that's why we chose bamboo because of those properties the tensile strength the ability to wear you know it's antibacterial so you know you wear your t-shirt it's out in the sun and you're not worrying about you know smelling bad because it's blocking a lot of those odors plus bamboo naturally it is uv resistant naturally so it kind of keeps you cooler you know than just your regular cotton t-shirts so that's also a benefit now i'm not going to say that you know, you can be in a hundred degree weather with the sun beating down you in Las Vegas and you're going to be cool. That's impossible. Heat is heat. Think, yeah. But <laughs> I will tell you this, it's going to be about 
three to four degrees cooler on your skin than a regular t-shirt. And awesome. that's a plus right there. That, that's that's a, a heck of a difference there. I love that. You even spend less on aircon in the US, right? Or in Panama or whatever. They use a lot of aircon. I mean, four degrees <laughs> is four degrees. <laughs> And, and exactly. how come, Sean, uh, uh, nobody came up with, with that already? I mean, we're 2024. Um, there have been some bamboo brands out there, and I think we can like get almost everywhere bamboo socks. But how come you're the first one like having uh, the build, build like a, a, a T-shirt like that uh, out of bamboo, um, focusing on, on those issues? What do you think? What is the challenge there? Well, um, <laughs> one of the challenges that I found, and, and I did see bamboo apparel out there, um, and I went and bought one. I was excited, and I put it on, and it was like a blanket on me. And I'm thinking. Yeah, that's typical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't that's fit true. well. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think you have to, first of all, people want to look good in what they're wearing. That's the first and foremost. Yeah. I can't speak for people. We all want to look good. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you have to start with that in mind. If you're not going to look good in it, then it doesn't matter whether it's made out of bamboo or out of mangoes or if it's made out of sunshine, <laughs> people aren't going to wear it. Uh, yeah. So we, we started there with the fit. We had to attack that first. Once we got that down, then we were able to work with the material, of the bamboo, and bamboo just lend itself naturally to it because of the way it looks on your body and the way it feels. So that's why we... Uh, I think that's probably why we'll be more popular and more successful because everyone who's gotten our samples, they're like, oh, these are great. Oh, these are great. I love this. This is wonderful. And it's like, you know, this material has been out there for since the 90s. It's just no one's taking the time to actually sit down and, you know, come up with some good fits that would work for all these different body types. And also another thing, no one's doing it for women either. I mean, it's like women have been left out in the dark. So that's probably another reason as well. If um, you make something really nice for a woman, then you will see your brand start to take off because women, you know, if you cater to their needs and say, look, you know, we've actually made this with your body types in mind, then they will support that. You know, just show them a little love and women will show you a lot more love in return. That's <laughs> Anyone true. who has a mother can yeah. definitely testify to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true, Sean. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, so um, let's talk a little bit about the, the material and, and where you source it from and uh, maybe a little bit about the species because, uh, as we know, there are, like, so many different species of bamboo. Um, there are some which probably, uh, or you selected the species because of the um, fibers or the, the cellulose, right? Yes. So my bamboo, it comes from China, and China is 33%. Uh, they have 33% 33, 33 of the bamboo forests in the world. So they mm -hmm. have the most diverse species there of just different types of bamboo. And one of the uh, bamboos that they use, they call it sea bamboo. Um, I'm, I've been trying to find the, uh, the, the, the particular species. This particular bamboo is 40% cellulose, which well, is... Yeah. It's, it's it's very high concentration of cellulose, which is very important. And I'm going to show you a diagram in a minute of the process of how they actually make the bamboo. That would but, be amazing. Yeah. 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 But, you know, <laughs> the thing about it is I chose the, this company, this particular region, because this company uses a closed loop manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two ways to actually make bamboo fabric. You have the um, viscose way where mm -hmm. viscose, where they actually treat the uh, material or the fiber, the source with uh, alkaline chemicals, and then they're able to get that into a yarn. And then it comes out a lot more like a silk kind of way. Rayon mm -hmm. is kind of made that way. It's been around, I don't know, almost a hundred years, this process. It's not a new process. The second way is mechanical process where you actually get the uh, pulp, you start using mechanical combers to pull it apart and fibers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can make different types of baskets and it's got more of the true bamboo fiber look to it and characteristics. Um, mm -hmm. Not the most comfortable thing to wear, you know, 
uh, yeah. because again, you're just basically pulling these apart mechanically. Uh, they can be a little stiff. You have to do certain things to try to get it to work with you, but they've made denim out of that, out of the, out of the material that way. Okay. But you know, just the whole process is just pulling it mechanically, pulling it apart. I don't know if a lot of people want to wear the undergarments and it's got that itchiness to it. You know, we, we do want to be comfortable. So yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely true. What you say first it's comfort and, and then it's like all the other stuff, uh, which, uh, is nice to have that it, it has all the, the, the benefits, let's say the additional <laughs> benefits, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let me show you the, um, I'm going to share my screen with you. I'm going to mm -hmm. show you the, um, the process of how we get the bamboo. Okay. So let's just, okay. Consume a little bit, then it's, it'll be a bit, bit bigger on the, um, screen. Okay. How's that look now? Not bad. It, but maybe you can zoom like just, the the image like before <laughs> or Let like see. that. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. So different steps, right? First step, second step, third step. Okay. So the first step, you've got your bamboo and they plant it in the spring. And basically you choose the sea bamboo. It's got the 40% cellulose and you have your harvester. He comes in or she comes in and they harvest it properly. You have to cut it at the right area so that it will continue to grow because you're going to come back again next year and cut some more. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next step is you're going to cut the bamboo into strips and chips. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. These chips, they almost look like, um, um, like a charcoal or, or a little wood chips, you know, okay. mesquite barbecue chips. Small, and they very smash small. That. Very small. Yeah. Okay. And they smash the plant to make the, um, the pulp. So mm -hmm. those chips are then put into a big vat like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Step five. And then you add your chemicals. Uh, the chemicals are the, um, the sulfuric acid uh, to break it down. And then of course the, um, the alkaline, uh, the carbon uh, sulf man, what's the name of that again? Help me out. <laughs> I had it written down. Well, all the chemicals <laughs> which are needed, right? Yeah. Yeah. You need those chemicals, those alkaline mm -hmm. uh, chemicals. Alkalines are, uh, to give you an example, what alkaline uh, chemical is something that has alkaline properties. These are things with a pH higher than seven. Our water is at a pH seven. That's mm -hmm. considered neutral. Acid is at a pH below seven. So mm -hmm. an alkaline solution would be something like a, a salt water or like a detergent, so to speak. A lot mm -hmm. of soaps have high alkaline levels. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You then uh, combine the water and the mean oxide to soften the fiber. Okay. And then from there, they extract the fiber into step seven mm -hmm. and they start making it into a yarn. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now, from there, you can then weave it into the bamboo fabric. Now, this is the thing that concerned me. What happens after step six? What do you do with all those chemicals? You know, yeah, absolutely. And those are, even though it's a uh, sulfuric acid, you know, and, and also the other alkaline, you dump that stuff back into a river or you dump that stuff into the ground, it's going to affect everything around it. So mm -hmm. that was a big concern for me. I didn't want to create something or, or partner with a manufacturer that was just dumping their products back into the environment. This company mm -hmm. actually recognizes that. So they have a closed loop to where they actually capture all the chemicals that they're using through the rinsing process, through the process of, of softening the fiber. They're capturing all that and they're putting it back into their process. Any that they cannot put into the process, they then continue to treat it and dilute it enough to where it can then be sent to an independent watering testing lab to make sure that it can go back into the river. And these people, uh, they live in the entire region to where they're actually, you know, dependent upon that river for, you know, crop growth, uh, growing their other bamboo. They, they, they cannot afford to just poison their environment. Mm -hmm. So that was very important to me. And, and I, and I like being with partners that, you know, are using 
good common sense as far as, you know, making something, not just yeah. putting something out there and say, oh, don't worry about this. We'll just bury this underground somewhere and we'll let the next generation deal with it. Not the partners that I'm working with. So. Awesome. That's uh, right. The mindset, Sean. Ah. Yeah. Thank ah. you. Ah. Okay. How do I get back to There we go. All right. There we are. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so this is a, a nice insight regarding the the process uh, or the the basic process of of like creating um, from giant grass something like a t-shirt, um, which does uh, seem uh, a lot of work. Is <laughs> the harvesting bamboo is is a lot of work. I know it myself, um, and um, seeing the other processes then um, for sure is uh, quite some. Uh, quite some steps and every step has to be done exactly the the way it should be else you won't have the the constant quality of sure of course so uh it's uh interesting <laughs> yes it's there's a lot of steps involved and it is very physical manual uh intensive but you know imagine you have this region in china and the people there that are benefited from it, the people who actually are able to just grow the bamboo. And a lot of these were just farmers or people who worked in factories and they lost a lot. And then they, they had land. So they started planting bamboo shoots and now they're able to actually, you know, thrive again. Mm -hmm. So I see that as a benefit uh, where people can just say, you know what, we're not only uh, contributing to, you know, the fashion industry, but we're actually making a product that is sustainable, that is great, that people like. So you know, that's, that's just, should be a win that way, in my opinion, you know? And and I think for the ones um, selling, if it's like uh, all from one hand, it's it's added value for them instead of just selling the bamboo as poles, which doesn't bring a lot of value, selling it as fiber or as a, like a textile already or like clothing. I don't know. How how, how do you buy it like in, in rolls or how, how do you get your, your bamboo fiber? So I actually work with a company that actually will take it and they will hand stitch and make the shirts themselves from the rolls. Wow. Okay. So, so from, from the rolls. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It takes a little time to actually get them. And trust me, they were like, okay, the minimum order is a lot, but yeah. that's okay though. I, I don't mind the minimum order being high, uh, particularly with the craftsmanship and they're doing it by hand, um, which kind of lends into the logo that we have, which is a true fit former logo. I'll share it with you again. So yeah, please do so. Pull that up. And is the t-shirt you, you have right on now, isn't it the prototype of the bamboo t-shirt? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So there's our logo. It's not. <laughs> there we go. You know, every time I blow it up, it gets dark. Let me see if I can pull up another one that actually we can show i can show it yeah the there. pdf maybe it's there we go Ta -da. <laughs> so yeah they're, they're actually making these by hand and they're they're using the different sizes that i came up with as opposed to them just cutting them from you know a press and and just saying okay large extra large medium no they actually have to use the sizes that I came up with and it is a little bit more intensive, but you know, the product came out great. In fact, here's the shirt that I'm wearing. Looks so, pretty neat to me. Yeah. Yeah. The sleeves are great. Um, fits great, fits great around the shoulders. And what's and, the mix, Sean? Uh, is it? It's not hundred um, percent um, bamboo fiber. Is it mixed with? Uh... So, this one is mixed ninety five percent bamboo. Okay, that's the the for for like more elasticity, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, we wanted something to where you know just a little bit of spandex put in there would allow it to actually conform to your muscles much mm -hmm. better. The things mm -hmm. that you really want to accentuate, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. th we wanted 95% bamboo because we really wanted to stay as true as we possibly could to this. So having more bamboo in there, you get all those benefits of being antibacterial, all those benefits of being UV resistant, all those benefits of using less water to clean it. Feeling some fresh. of the, 
Yeah. Some of the other stuff I've seen out there, you know, you've got 70% bamboo fiber, mm. uh, 60% bamboo fiber. And I, I don't want to disparage nothing, but I wanted something to where it's like, okay, if we use as much bamboo as we possibly can to make this, then we're going to get more of the benefits that bamboo offers. So that's mm -hmm. why we chose that, you know, but the 5% spandex, it's what helps, you know, it conform to your body the way that you want it to conform to your body. I understand. I understand. And um, Sean, regarding the True Fit Forma brand, what was the initial motivation there? Um, when did you get started? And what was the turning point when, when you said, okay, now I really want to get this like running? So if you look at the Kickstarter campaign, I talk a little bit about it, but really, I think this all idea started maybe about five or seven years ago. Um, I was watching a TV show and I saw one of these actors, Jamie Foxx. He was wearing a, a, a nice black t-shirt and it looked great on him. And I thought, man, I'd like to get a t-shirt like that. I mean, so I started looking, I went to the high end department stores, ordering these, you know, $50 t-shirts and trying them on. And none of them seemed to fit the way that they fit on that guy. And I was thinking, it's like, what's wrong? Maybe I need, you know, what's going on here? Maybe I need to lose some weight or maybe I need to get a bigger size. So I get a bigger size and then it would be, I'd be swimming in it. Then I thought, well, maybe I need to try this brand. And it never seemed to work. So, you know, I, had, oh, this was December of last year. I was going through my t-shirts again and <laughs> I was frustrated. I was like, you know what? It's 2024, it's soon to be 2024. Why can't we find a t-shirt that actually looks good on us? And <laughs> that's when I thought, I was like, you know, I bet if, I bet I can make a better shirt and I bet I could make better apparel, frankly. So I started doing some research. I started contacting different manufacturers across the world uh, and trying different types of materials, bringing in samples, some of the samples that I got in, they just didn't work. Some of the samples I got in, you know, were just, they just couldn't seem to get the measurements right. Mm -hmm. So I then found um, one, actually two manufacturers. One actually makes really good bamboo type clothing, but it just didn't have the look I wanted. It just didn't move well enough. This other company that I chose right now, they seem to be more ethically responsible. They were bragging and just really happy about the process they use. And they're saying, yes, you know, we are very proud of the fact that we have a closed, you know, loop cycle with the, the process. And I like that. I mean, that, and they've been in business for at least, let's see, 15 years. So they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So got the samples in, um, several of them, various different types. And, you know, I told my wife about it and she was a true test. Uh, she was like, okay, let's see. And I was afraid. She put it on. She said, I love it. And she doesn't wear t-shirts. So <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So right. I came up with the name True Fit Forma. I got it registered with the, the U.S. trademark office. And, you know, it wasn't just this, just t-shirts. I wanted to also come out with different types of apparel. Uh, the next thing that we'll come out with is the underwear. Uh, then there'll be yoga pants. And then there will be other things that you can get that are from the true fit forma brand because we want things to actually be true fits we don't want it we don't we, we shouldn't have to live in a day to where it's like you go to a place like walmart and you get a pack of t-shirts and just have to deal with it you know it's like come on no we should have better now it's 2024 for goodness sakes i agree i agree it's really and and the other thing is also when you travel a lot you know that the l or the m in one country is not the same as in another country. So you're like, oh, oh, this is like the American L or this is the, I don't know, the German L. And this is even more of a big mess. So yeah, it's uh, it would be nice to have just fitting clothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, my sizes, I put them in um, the metric system. Um, so if you go there and you see the sizes there in centimeters, a couple of reasons. One reason is there are more Europeans, more people in the world using the metric system than, than English. And if you really want to know in inches, you can basically ask your phone, hey, Siri, 
convert right. this to inches. That's mm -hmm. one thing. The second reason is you can make the measurements even more precise using the metric system. And that that's what sense. I wanted. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Rather yeah. than say, oh, make it um, 12 inches in length, you know, it's like, no, 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 let's do 33.4 centimeters in length. And yeah. we're able to actually get that a much more precise look. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we use the metric system. That's interesting. And, and even more from an American, because uh, I know that the, the, the metric system is, uh, I mean, it's not the one, the system you're using uh, over there. So it's kind of probably uh, special, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, yeah. you know, there was a big push uh, 40 years ago to try to teach kids the metric system. And oh, I didn't you know, know about that. That's interesting. Oh, yes. And it didn't work out. <laughs> no, I mean, you can, if you buy a lot of American products, you'll see the uh, English pound system and you'll see the metric system next to each other. Like a, you'll get a two liter bottle of Coke. Okay. Instead of saying uh, you're getting um, three quarts of a Coke, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So it's slowly catching on. People are getting used to it. But, you know, I, got a, I have a degree in chemistry and that is the, the metric system is what you measure with. Uh, there's uh, no, you're not going to use the pound system. If you want to get an A and pass and get a degree in chemistry, you're going to have to learn the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's basic, right? It's, it's uh, the scientific um, system. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So most yeah. math and most science majors here in this country, they use yeah. the metric system and it's definitely much more accurate, you know, and, and, and it's easier, you know? And Sean, what about the like the the general S S M M L X L X X L? Um, does that help also? I mean, that's very common use. People know oh, I am L or whatever or S X X X L or. Uh, but but your t-shirts are like more specific, right? You have like additional sizing, so people know oh, I have like. Lots of muscle, for example, on the breast, so I need more more space there, and and uh, or whatever, or big shoulders, or exactly. I wear a large, okay. Mm -hmm. Although most people, I'm not trying to brag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people would be like, "Oh, they think of large, they think of a big burly person or a bigger person." Mm -hmm. No, a large to me is somebody who has you know developed shoulders and, and a chest, you know. My my son, he's taller than me. However, he he wouldn't be considered a large because he still has to grow into his his body. You know, you don't start getting the the attributes of of an adult until you get into eighteen and nineteen and twenty. Yeah. You know, yeah. so a true large is going to take that into consideration. You mm -hmm. know, Makes so sense. yeah, <laughs> that's why the large looks good on me, even though. Most people will say, oh, he's not a large kind of guy. No, no, I am a large. I have, I have man-sized attributes. I have a man-sized shoulders. I have a man-sized chest. You know, <laughs> you know, if you have a 42-inch chest, but you have a small waist, you know, the T-shirt industry and the apparel industry is going to fail you. It's like, well, what do you do? Then they will tell that person, okay, well, you probably need to get an extra large. Yeah, But, but then all of a sudden, the shirt is yeah, it's too much. Exactly. And if they try to get a medium, it's like it's too tight. You know, yeah. So we we overcome that issue a lot, especially for the bigger people as well. You know, yeah. we we can get all the way up to five XL, but for now, with the initial Kickstarter, I figured I'd just go with the the double XL for men and double XL for women as well. So mm -hmm. you know, and how's the the Kickstarter thing? Is is still like is is this easy? I mean, I I, um, I was uh, using it like. 10 years ago, I think already, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've lost it a little bit right now. I haven't been on it for a, a good while. I was like, oh, this is still a thing. So it's, it seems like it still like works. And uh, probably the challenge there is to get visibility, right? To get like people on board and, and show them, hey, we have really something unique. Uh, uh, because I remember back in the day, um, the ones who, who achieved like their goals on Kickstarter, they spent like a lot of money in marketing and in, in, in all that um to to then well access to to more visibility and 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 maybe get more uh, funds right exactly yes it's it's definitely been a challenge and i've never been one to shy away from a challenge and you know you, you 
we all know a lot of people, right? I, I think we all can kind of find a thousand people we know through six degrees of separation. Yeah. So the first people you reach out are all those people, you know, you know, it's like, do you remember me from elementary school? You know, you used to make me eat mud. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have a Kickstarter, so support me. <laughs> oh, yeah. if, if, if it only worked that way. No, it, it's a challenge. And it's a challenge, right? yeah. you will be amazed how, you know, you will tell your friends and family about something and, you know, the one, some will just jump on it right away. And then others will just, you know, for whatever reasons, just it's not a priority to them. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, that's just kind of how life is. I like how, you know, the, the, the energy it takes to, to do the fundraising and getting the message out there. If you truly believe in something, then having a Kickstart campaign will force you to go out there and tell everyone you know about your product. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. you should be doing that. If you believe in something strong enough, you should be telling everyone you know about it. It should be something that should instantly just fall right off your lips. You know, when you're talking to people, if you're not doing that, then perhaps maybe you don't believe in what you have. And why would anyone want to support what you have? Right. So and, and regarding the, the market, uh, I, 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 it seems to me that you have like a, a very interesting market because it could be like. Um, just people uh, working in offices, which commonly have a black T-shirt, and if it looks good, it's it's cool because you don't want to look bad in the office either, right? But you do want to like, you don't always want to be like super uh, overclosed or or that, right? Um, exactly. And it, but it could also be people just who go golfing or or uh, a walk uh, or for an ice cream or whatever on a Sunday or Saturday afternoon, right? So. Uh, It's, I mean, everybody wants to look good. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a really a, a, a thing that works for everybody. Which It does. makes the, the business uh, bigger and wider at the end. It's not just uh, the sporty kind of people or the business. No, it's, it's everybody. <laughs> it's everybody. Everybody wants to look good and presentable, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we come out of the pandemic and, One thing that the pandemic has given us is leisure wear. There's a lot more leisure wear out there. And so what do you mean by leisure wear? Um, like, uh, have you seen those um, leisure pants or sweats? They look like sweatpants or joggers, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you could actually dress them up a little bit better and mm -hmm. dress them up a little bit more and, and just walk around in them. Uh, another example of a leisure wear which started out as a uh, fitness wear are yoga pants. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You know, when yoga pants first came out, you know, usually you saw women wearing them, but then they had their, their yoga towel and their, the and their yoga mat under their yeah. arm. You know, they yeah. just left the yoga studio. Well, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's what we wear now. It's, it's, it's comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone wears it. I mean, you have people who are wearing yoga pants and they don't do yoga. They're like, uh, this is the only yoga I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we've gotten more, you know, casual, but yet mm -hmm. we still want to look good. And that's the thing. It's like um, going back into the office here in America, the people who have to go back to the office, the companies knew that people didn't want to go back to the office. So a lot of the corporate America, they said, okay, fine. If you come back in, you know, you can wear casual clothing, you know, they've kind of, so before it wasn't before. No, it, oh. no, it was not. It was, <laughs> you know, a lot of industries still wanted you to wear a, a, a suit and tie, you know, to go in. And it's kind of hard to go back to that. Because a lot of people were saying, look, if I have to go back into the office, you know, I don't want to have to go back to wearing that stiff uniform anymore. So companies compromised, but they still that's want the, you to look presentable. And that, that's the, the main thing, right? They want you to look like well, because you're representing the organization, the company, right? You, that's right. You are still doing that. So that's uh, one of the trends that I think is just going to continue going forward. Uh, people want to look good, but they want to be comfortable as well, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, I was wondering regarding the color right now, you started with black and, yes. um, are you considering like later other colors or is it like, uh, 
No, good question. In fact, the gentleman asked me today, he said, do they come in white? And I'm like, <laughs> right now we are just doing black. <laughs> you can't go wrong with black. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the first round. Of course, you know, we want to, you know, do white. We also want to do a different type of a uh, neck, or like natural. a G neck or, or, or a natural color. Mm -hmm. um, white is easier to do, but we could do natural colors as well. We could even do red and but this is where it gets a little tricky of course because now you're using different dyes and it's going to work differently with bamboo mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's, it might not look the way that you would expect it to look on cotton so we'll be playing around with these different type of dyes and colors to make sure we get the right color right now the easiest thing to do is black and of course white right then but we'll start be interesting doing then if it gets different results you know than cotton to to differentiate from cotton you know, mm -hmm. if, if you get like, let's say a, a natural color, which doesn't exist with, with cotton. And then people start like, yeah, I have like the bamboo shirt, you know, this is like, <laughs> I know. Yeah, maybe. I would like to have like a custom color to where it looks like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. I mean, I want to come out with blue. I love blue. That's one blue of my is... favorite colors. Yeah. I love blue. You know, I just love it. But some people will come back and say, oh, I prefer yellow. I prefer red. I prefer green. So I want, when we start getting into that discussion, I, I want the company to be successful enough to where it's like, okay, we have all the colors of the rainbow. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. So first is the, the, the initial one is black. And then from there on, probably white will be the second one and, and so on. Right. Exactly. Even though black and white are not colors, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you for saying right. that. Thank you for yeah. saying that. And, you know, it's funny. I said that to uh, someone once before and they were like, they looked at me crazy. I'm like, okay, someone did not take art class growing up. <laughs> yeah. No, not everybody, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it is, right? <laughs> Nothing to, um, no big deal at the end. Just details. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just details. So you, you said also a V-neck is something because of the, the, the um, length of the, of the um, like also the form of the head and, and all that. So sometimes V-neck works better, right? Yes. Uh, V-necks are great. I like a good V-neck t-shirt. Um, it's kind of funny how um, different type of collars, collars will become fashionable and then they'll fall out of fashion. Um, I think about seven years ago, the V-neck was very popular. You know, everyone's doing the V-neck and it's, and, and women love the V-neck and th they still love the V-neck, but then all of a sudden the round collar started to come back and it's, it's like, okay, why did the round collar come back? And, and I don't know. I mean, maybe a celebrity was wearing a round collared shirt and it looked really good on him or on her. And then everyone starts doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, you basically have to have both those type of collar styles, uh, uh, what we call a round or a crew neck and then a V neck. That's mm -hmm. going to be natural. That's going to come next and it'll be in black and it will also be in white as well. So we'll have those two different collar styles, you know, that will be available. Makes makes sense. Makes sense. We also uh, mentioned something before the the um, European Bamboo Expo uh, in in Germany, right? And you said maybe uh, you're uh, looking forward to uh, this year or maybe next year to to be there. So that's probably the next step after the Kickstarter to be really on on site, um, exposing and and showing and 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 uh, showing off the what you have, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes, and that that would just be so much fun networking with other creators and and other bamboo entrepreneurs and and big thinkers. Mm -hmm. uh, I having a scientific background, I like being around people who are taking the resources that we have and using it to better mankind. And that was the whole point of of chemistry in the first place. Of course, <laughs> there's some mistakes along the way. Uh, one of the um, one famous example of a mistake is Madame Curie. She's the, uh, one would say the mother of uh, discovery when it comes to um, radioactivity. Mm -hmm. She discovered, accident, right? yeah, exactly. She took uh, the, the pitch from tar and she heated it up and she basically had like a candle with a, a piece of paper over it. 
and she could see through the light could come through the candle and through the piece of paper, and she could see that the molecules were acting kind of weird over the 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 the, the pitch. Mm-hmm. That's the radiation that was just coursing through her body, killing her as she's making this wonderful scientific discovery. You said, yeah. "Oh, you know." So yeah, the idea is the chemistry is supposed to make our lives better, but there's, there are mistakes that happen along the way. The same thing with the boll weevil and the pesticides and all these different things, you know. So and everything see, we have from petrol today, which is like almost everything around us, right? So yes. if, if we get more bamboo closing, that would be a, a very big step for humanity for sure. I totally agree, and I think that's where we are starting to be more responsible now. We want things that are sustainable. Um, we don't want to have to make something that the next generation has to clean up. It's just... There's another question for you, Sean. Um, uh, considering that bamboo is a natural fiber and basically grass, right? Uh, it would be interesting. Probably you don't have the answer to this question, but it doesn't, uh, it's, it's not a big deal. But um, it would be interesting to know um, once you, you throw away the, the bamboo clothing, you know, like you throw it away, how long does it take to break down into into uh into just uh, natural uh the 95% uh, bamboo fiber and then uh, the the spandex probably is not going to break down so fast because that's based on on petrol mm. that that could be really interesting um you know like thinking of the the um there is this plastic which is um compostable plastic which breaks down in in 6 or 24 months uh it's also uh, it has some chemicals in there um, but basically it breaks it down in, in microplastics. So, uh, it speeds up the process of, of, uh, once you, you're not using it anymore. And the same thing could be interesting with, um, bamboo clothing, considering what happens at the end of the life of the product. <laughs> you know, and here's the thing, what I would like and is, uh, create a program to where we could reclimate you know, the old clothing and take it back to the process again, going back to the process would not be that difficult. Uh, So you could like recycle existing used bamboo clothing. Um, that, that sounds very smart, actually. I mean, if you can use the fiber, like break it down again into, into molecules or cells and then stitch it together again into, into, uh, the fiber and then into, into the, the clothes. Uh, roll. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it can be done that way. I mean, you could, you know, repurpose it for mm-hmm. instead of maybe the T-shirt. Maybe you could use it for towels exactly. or other types of clothing. The material is is good. So mm-hmm. you know, you know, I grew up in a family to where we didn't waste nothing. <laughs> we we always found uses for something. So it's just that mentality. I always tend to think that way, and I think the material would definitely lend itself to be repurposed to where you can use it again. You could even use it for other stuff. Then, for example, you could say, okay, uh, the the fiber maybe is is a bit like used, but we can use it for for harder, thicker fiber. Let's say, uh, you know, the, for the uh, trucks, they use fibers there and maybe Mm -hmm. you can then produce out of that other fiber, fiber for the truck, which is like triple or quadruple the, the, the thickness of the t-shirt. And, um, I mean, that survives like, I think five to 10 years max also because of the sun and the rain and all that stuff. Right. Yes. Um, actually there is in Switzerland, the company, maybe, you know, them, that's a fry tag. They make uh, like urban uh, bags out of recycled uh, truck, um, sheets. So yes. they, you know them, of course. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but your idea is, is the other way around and could be very, uh, interesting too. So to say, okay. We sell you the T-shirt once you don't use it again, or, or you you give it away in second hand, or you don't want it. You can just send it back to us, or we, we, uh, with your next order, you just send it back, and we'll reuse it. So this is uh, kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. Really, um, we're not there yet, but yeah, yeah, but that's where we want to. Kind of... We want to go that way. I mean, I think that's no. just the best way of just making sure that you're really reducing your your carbon footprint mm-hmm. and, and, and repurposing that. I mean. That's a good thing, you know, particularly if it's something for the customer as well. It's like, okay, great. Send it back. You're going to get a discount on your next one. Or if you right. return, 
We, we, even we, better. We, yeah, yeah. We give you another one. You know, exactly. It's great. So. Send two back and, and get a uh, 50% or get another one or get, I don't know, a, a unique one or, or whatever, right? So Big. the whole, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So uh, let's let's talk about the Kickstarter. So um, let's share one more time. I will share the screen of your Kickstarter um, Thank you. page where people can um, go there. So you have to uh, Google True Fit Forma, yes. basically. Um, That's it. I'm gonna like mark it here. So it's 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 three words in 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 one the brand, um, and basically here we are on Kickstarter. Uh, or you can directly search in Kickstarter and you'll find it there. Um, and um, there's an intro video here and then all the description and the photos and all that. Uh, and they can back the project right here, right? This is uh, um, this is the important button. <laughs> <laughs> That's the button that I want you to push. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, is there another page right now where people can follow you or uh, maybe Instagram or uh, LinkedIn? Yes, you can follow me on Instagram as well. Uh, oh, oh. It's not under the Truth Informer. It's just under my name, but you can put the link in okay. there. And actually, I follow you, JJ, Okay, well I'll put, You know what, Sean? I'll put all that into the blog article oh, thank um, you. with a summary. So, uh, I mean, let's help people find find you. And, um, I mean, the Kickstarter is like, a, is, is a, how many days? 17 days. And so, I assume after that time, you'll you'll... Still will be there, probably not with this Kickstarter uh, uh, um, uh, platform thing, but maybe somewhere else. So uh, we just uh, put all the, the URLs, links where, where they can find you. And uh, probably in, in future, we'll have like a own website and, and, and all that. Exactly. In fact, uh, after the campaign is done, you know, we're still going to get the material. We're still going to put in our order. We're still going to get the shirts. The people who have backed me, you know, I have one um, a politician found out about us and he's like, oh, my gosh, I, I got to get these for my campaign. So oh, cool. That's amazing. He contributes five hundred dollars. I'm like, OK, I'm on the hook. <laughs> so, amazing. I mean, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah. You want you want some big orders right now that will help really to to uh, speed up uh, the 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 starting phase, which is like really the hardest part. Right. In any startup. It is the hardest part. Just yeah. it, it's it's exciting. People get frustrated with it, but me, I, I I like creating something. I like starting something, and and the first steps that you take as a, as a human being are tough. You know, you're trying to keep yeah. your balance, but exactly. now you know we walk and we don't even think about it. You know, exactly. So and and what's your gut feeling regarding the the big brands or big clothing manufacturers? Um, do you think they will catch up or are they kind of uh, busy with their own issues? And uh, uh, or do you think you'll get a phone call uh, in, in the next future? Like, hey, Sean, uh, here is uh, X amount of money. Uh, let, let, uh, let's work together and you work for us now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ultimately, you know, if uh, let's say, for instance, Levi's decided that they wanted to get into this business and just and just flood the market with these products. They, they <laughs> definitely have the uh, resources, they have the stores, they have the distribution, they have the entire machine. Yeah. But they're a huge animal, right? They're huge they're organizations, huge they're like IBM, they're like thousands of little ants, they're uh, uh, working within their logic. Exactly. Uh, which impels them or to, to really innovate for, for real, right? That's right. It, when you're that big, it's kind of hard to just turn. It's like uh, having a big um, cruise a ship. It's, yeah, you know, or a big truck. Right you know, yeah. you have to go way. You have to make a big long radius. You know, to make yeah. that turn. Yeah. Whereas, you know, right now I can be, I'm, I'm, I'm more intimate. You can be more intimate with your, with your customer, your supporter, and you find out exactly what they need and what they like, and you just build upon those things, and and you just continue giving people more of what they want. Mm -hmm. if, if, if And if the big manufacturers saw that and they're like, you know what, this is what we want to do, I would applaud that because if the big people, the whole point was I started this journey because I just wanted something that looked good on me. Yeah, and you were missing that. Yeah, yeah. I was missing yeah. that. It's like, you know, I would happily buy these from Fruit of the Loom or from Hanes if they were selling them. 
Yeah. You know, they're not. They're not selling them. <laughs> so selling them. Yeah. you know, yes, maybe they should look up and 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 if they if they find that this is something that's great and they decide to put a lot of money into doing it and and putting it out there, great. I will be so happy about that. It's like great. The next thing I would be looking for is my flying car. Like they promised <laughs> us flying cars in the 21st century. Yeah. We don't have them yet. I so. remember. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. I, I think that's one of the main reasons the, the big manufacturers, like you said, they're too big. Mm -hmm. um, they have their strategies in place and they don't really see any reason for doing something that they would consider niche. But you it's know? crazy, right? I mean, it's the same thing with the car industry where we had GM and uh, what is it, BMW and, and uh, Mercedes and, and all those big uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. And for, for, but like, 10, 20, 30 years, they were like working on the electric car. And then yes. you have like Tesla, the startup. And within what is it, five to 10 years, they're market leader, you know? And they, of uh, course, it, it's yeah. like, how is it possible that the other guys have like hundreds of, of like engineers and, and all the money you, you can like think of, but they're not able to do anything, right? And, and the little startup there out of nothing. Exactly. It's it's pretty much how it usually works. You have a, a situation of David and Goliath. You have the big three, Toyota, Honda, you know, GM, Ford, Chrysler. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden Tesla comes out and says, we're just going to make an all electric vehicle. And, you know, that was 10 years ago, essentially. And now they're the market leader. They mm -hmm. have the infrastructure in place. Everyone is trying to catch up to them. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. So, are are you already considering to plant bamboo to be to stay market leader? <laughs> <laughs> next step. <laughs> the next step is is continue working with my supplier. I would like to have a domestic supplier here. That would be um, awesome, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think here in the United States, on this side of the world, we have areas in certain states that have plenty of space like nevada for instance and and you do have bamboo already actually in in florida and and some places you have lots of of bamboo growing already since years uh it's it's not probably the same as in china but still um they're uh sp interesting species of bamboo growing right now in the u.s of course yes. then you have like the 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 wage which is much higher and all that but uh, at the end, uh, it's not impossible. Um, it's 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 interesting for sure. It Sean, is in the <laughs> in the way, and you're right. The the way to the economy of scales, right? Um, yeah. But yeah. you know, being able to grow it here and 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 making it easier, I think that would definitely be a good push. But also at the same time, I mean, I like how you know the the world economy works. If you are selling something here in the United States that's made someplace else at a cheaper price to where you can sell it here at a good price, then, you know, there it's a win for everyone. The, 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 the people that are making it, they're making more money and yeah. they have a better lifestyle and the people who are buying. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Unless uh, the geopolitical situation uh, gets worse and, uh, uh, they'll like uh, won't allow anything from China anymore, and and then you'll have maybe to to uh, check on on uh, Florida or or Latin America, um, which also has bamboo. Because the cool thing about bamboo actually is it grows almost anywhere. Anywhere. So um, I mean that's pretty amazing for a plant that grows that fast. And and um, but you have to plant it, of course, if it's not there yet. And you have to find the right species according to the climate, to the soil and all that. Um, but still, uh, compared to a uh, cotton, which is like a huge tree, uh, uh, and uh, obviously uh, cotton monoculture really uh, has super problematic. I mean, any monoculture is problematic, right? But um, the thing is, bamboo works very well within polycultures too. So you don't mm -hmm. have to have bamboo uh, monoculture. Um, you can use, you could have like bamboo uh, with other crops, uh, what, it could be corn or whatever uh, regarding um, also uh, the same thing like the clothing, you could plant bamboo to keep the temperature um, more balanced yes. and use the bamboo for the clothing and have the corn or, or whatever other harvest between the bamboo, you know? 
So uh, you could do some really smart stuff um, there, uh, depending on, on the climate and the location and what you're uh, growing, of course. <laughs> because you exactly. could also use, like, you know, the bamboo? Um, yes. The, the sh shots are edible. So you can yes. eat them. You can also eat, uh, do tea out of the leaves. Um, so bamboo tea, really, really tasty, good also. Um, so there are so many uses. It's just crazy. Um, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's a really good source. And in fact, um, I think I watched one of your podcasts and they were talking about how there was a bamboo age, you know, yeah, yeah. before yeah. the bronze age. And yeah, well, the so, thing is because it was bamboo, everything broke down and there is almost <laughs> nothing left, right? Which is perfect, but kind of hard to then like, uh, get information without it because uh, everything is, is broken down again in cells, right? See, there you go. That's the sustainability of using bamboo. It's like yeah. this age existed, and we don't have any proof that it existed. Why? Because it went back to the world. Exactly. <laughs> and, and much faster than we probably just in the blink of, 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 of whatever, right? Because right. it's grass. It's grass. <laughs> and and they, they knew it. And um, all, again, knowledge got lost, and it seems like we're slowly catching up again now. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how, that, how things yeah. work out that way. Yeah. 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 Amazing, man. So, um, anything, uh, Sean, you think that we should, um, mention before, uh, we, um, uh, finish already this podcast or like I said, on the, uh, campaign, we have about 17 days left. So mm -hmm. any support would be great. If you've never done Kickstarter before any of the people out here who are listening and watching this, your, uh, contributions won't be due unless we actually reach our goal. So, you can pledge and hopefully you, you will pledge, but if you don't reach the goal, if we don't reach the goal, then of course you won't be charged, but that's cool. That's cool. So, you know, you can definitely go in there. You can generate as little as a dollar. We have different reward levels. Um, I'm all about, you know, helping my community out. So, you know, certain reward levels, we contribute to our local food bank and mm -hmm. I've been working with them since 2017. They know me there, but you know, one of the biggest issues here in our country, particularly here in California is homelessness. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of people sleeping in cars and sleeping on streets. They go to that crazy. food bank. Yeah. And crazy. they need something to eat. So the food yeah. bank is there to support them and help them. And you awesome. know, I can't solve homelessness, Yeah, but yeah. I can definitely kick in money to make sure someone can get something to eat. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone should have to go to bed hungry. Yeah, no, it should not be in the U.S., which is like uh, seen as the number one most uh, powerful country in the world, right? It makes no sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's yeah. just, it's, 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 it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So no. until it starts to make sense or until we solve it, this is just what we're doing, you know, and, and it's yeah. just purpose driven. So, yeah, go to our campaign, uh, make a pledge and uh, contact me, send me a message. I'm on Instagram as well. Um, send me messages there as well. What's your and Instagram? Let's mention it now. Uh, so it's in the podcast too. You can maybe spell it. Yeah. And I'm going to send that out to you right now. Do -do -do. At Jackson. S E A one one six. Okay. Go. So uh, on Instagram, um, you'll find Sean at um, Jackson. Mm -hmm. S E A one one six. Cool. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Sean, thank you very much for your time. Really, uh, super interesting insights. Uh, I think I learned a lot too here, and I'm always very thankful to uh, to get more insights. How how um, a, a thing like like a smart uh, clothing out of bamboo works. So I'm a little bit uh, wiser now. And um, I wish you all of uh, the, the best with the campaign. And uh, we'll publish um, this, um, try to publish it soon. So it's within the campaign. And um, let's keep in touch. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. And, and JJ, you got to send me your uh, information because I want to get you a nice shirt. You know, tell me your size and everything so Fantastic. I can get it's that so over nice. to you. Uh, so I, cool. I want you to enjoy the benefit of it. And, you know, it's just my way of saying thanks. Thank you. Awesome, man. Really, I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, really, absolutely. And also, I think uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, 
you're the 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 first one now doing this like that. I really think it's 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 about time to have clothing, you know, that fits on and you look good. So <laughs> thank hey, you. Amazing, amazing. Um, and uh, for those that uh, haven't done so, please uh, do subscribe to uh, Think Bamboo on um, YouTube and um, TikTok or Instagram. And that's all for today, folks. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs> okay, now...